Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for section 7.4, area and arc length in polar coordinates. So in section 7.3, we just learned how polar coordinates work, right? Now, just like we did with parametric, right? We learned how parametric coordinates work, and then we hit it with some calculus, right? Same thing's happening for 7.4, but this time we're doing one of polar coordinates, right? So in 7.3, we learned how to do polar coordinates, in 7.4, we're gonna hit it with some calculus, okay? And seeing how uh, we can start incorporating the calculus that we know up to now, right? Uh, for uh, areas and arc lengths and some other stuff uh, in our new representations, okay? So now, let me go ahead and get started with just doing regions bounded by a polar curve, okay? So this is back in the day, remember how we did um, areas, right? There is one thing that we need to bring up from pre-calc, okay? And that is the area of a sector, right? That's subtended by some angle theta uh, with the radius r. Okay, so if you had a circle, I'm gonna go ahead and do it over here really quick. If you had a circle, right? And you, uh, the radius was some r, and it's given by some angle theta, right? Then this slice right here, right, would be given by this formula right here. A is equal to one half R squared times theta, okay? So we're gonna need that in a second to um, sort of drive our uh, construction of areas for, uh, areas uh, represented by polar curves, okay? So now I'm gonna do a quick review on how we did areas, right? Um, and we did areas back uh, in, um, in chapter one, essentially. Okay, so if you guys remember, right? We had an X and a Y, right? And we were able to draw a curve, right? If you guys remember, right? We did whoosh, like that. I mean, do another nice whoosh right there, there we go. And we wanted, let's say we wanted the area from A to B, right? So that meant we wanted all of this, dot, 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 right there, right? We wanted this area right here, we wanted all of this. Now we know what this is now, right? This was the area that we were looking for. This was back in the day, right? If you guys recall, right? The integral from A to B of F of X dx, right? Whoa, whoa. Not what I wanted to happen. Come on. There we go. That's what we wanted to happen, right? This was our area, right? And the way that we did it was this. We grabbed our interval from A to B, right? And we started slicing it up, right? And in particular, what we did was we sliced that this was going to be our x of 0. This was going to be our x of n, right? And we ended up doing this thing. It was something like this, right? We ended up getting small little rectangles, right? You guys remember this, right? Each one of these rectangles was a delta x wide, right? Which was a b minus a divided by n. We divided it up into specific slices, right? Of specific, specific widths. And those widths were these delta x's, right? And all of this was divided, sort of the height of this rectangle was given by whatever this point was, right? And it was an F of X I star, right? That was the height. So then the area of just this one box, if you take a look at just this one box, right? The area of this one box, right? We called it a I, right? It's gonna be the base times the height. My height was F of X I star, right, times, and I made a big, huge mistake here, times, I'm just putting it down here, 
times delta x times o. So this is the height times the width, right? And what we did was we grabbed all of these areas, right? And we just added them all up and that was an approximation, right? So that was this thing. You guys remember the sum of the AIs, right? The sum of these xi stars times delta x's, right? That's where we got all of this from, right? And what we ended up doing, the idea here was that if we made that n, we made this delta x right here, if we made that infinitesimally small, so that means our n was getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Which means our divisions were much more finer, right? Then that was getting closer and closer to the area that's under this curve. That meant we did a limit, right? Okay. All of this was done, right? Based off of our A to B, and we divided it up into that those small little partitions, right? These XIs, these that script P, right? Okay. So that is the idea, right? That is the idea uh, for how we did uh, areas, right? Under our usual X, Y plane, right? So now let's go ahead and use that same construction for polar curves, right? So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna have an X and a Y, okay? But now just keep in mind, right, that we're messing with, whoa, not that. Let's go ahead and use a pen, huh? There's my X and let's go ahead and put my Y out. There we go, okay. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna create a curve, right? in polar coordinates here, okay? And that's gonna look something like this, okay? Whoosh, like that, okay? So this is representative of an R of theta, okay? And suppose, right, we wanted this area right here. We want all of this this time. Okay, we're gonna end up using the same construction that we used, right, for uh, the rectangular coordinates. We're gonna use sort of like the same sort of structure here. The difference though, is that we are going to be partitioning sort of our circles in smaller little slices. So in particular, right, instead of defining, instead of uh, dividing my x uh, variable, right, we're gonna divide our theta variable, our angle that we're gonna be sweeping, okay? So in this case, right, uh, let's say we wanted to get these, all of these angles, right? All of these angles, let's say our angle was from A, right? Actually, let me not, not use A, let me use alpha, right? To some angle beta, right? Which is straight up that way, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go get my alpha and beta interval, right? And I'm going to go ahead and uh, break it up into smaller sub intervals. So I'm going to basically grab this and just divide it up into smaller angles, okay? Each, right, with an angular width of delta theta, which is uh, B minus, uh, beta minus alpha divided by N. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one particular one of these. I'm gonna grab this one and it's gonna go way the heck out like this, right? So this width right here, is a delta theta, which is a beta minus alpha divided by n, okay? Okay, now what I want you guys to notice is that, uh, what, what I want you guys to notice is this, that the area 
And let me not do it that close. Let me go ahead and do like this. There we go. The area for this ice, um, for this ice slice, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be slicing this into wedges and pizza slices, basically, right? The area for this pizza slice that's right here, right, is going to be equal to whatever this R, right, whatever this R theta is given, right, and the angle for it is going to be my delta theta, right? So each one of these areas is going to be one half, right, R of some theta I star, squared times delta theta. Basically, we get this thing right here, right? If we use the area of a pizza slice, right, then this is the area that we get, okay? So just like we did before, if we grab all of these pizza slices, right? And we add up all the areas of the pizza slices, then we get the area of this polar curve. We get the entire area right here. We, oh, not what I wanted. We get this entire area. So this is gonna be my area A, right? So this is the construction for each one, right? So then if we grab the sum of all of them, Right, then that gives us a good approximation to the area under this polar curve, right? And just like we did before, right? This was all based off of this right here, my B minus A divided by N, right? And back when we were doing it in the X, Y coordinate, right? What we did was made all of those widths infinitely, infinitely, infinitely smaller, right? Got us a better uh, and better approximation to the area under our curve, right? By doing so, we were ending up taking a limit, right? So there it is, that is the construction. So this thing right here, that area is given by, let me go ahead and try to do the picture and the equation all at once, there we go, okay? So then this area right here, my A, right, is given by this right here, is the limit of the sum of each one of those pizza slices. We know what each one of those pizza slices look like, right? That's the one half times the R squared times the uh, D delta, the delta theta, right? And if you look, hopefully this rings a bell from back from uh, chapter two, right? It's gonna be one half times the integral from alpha to beta of r theta squared d theta, okay? And sort of hopefully you can see this, right? The one half r squared d theta, right? Is exactly the one half r squared delta theta that we got from our summation equation, okay? That's simple, okay? This con the construction is exactly the same. The difference, right, is now we're looking at areas of pizza slices rather than areas of rectangles. That is it, okay? The construction sort of holds out, okay? Okay, now how does this all work? So uh, in section 7.3, I gave you guys a um, calculator for this on Desmos, okay? And please, please, please use it. Um, just like before, right? Uh, don't use it as uh, don't use it as your crutch. You should be able to do these integrals by hand, most of them, right? Uh, and you can double check them using this integral calculator for polar curves. Okay. Let me show you guys how this works. Okay, I have a polar equation here r squared or r of theta is equal to three. And I want the area of this function over the interval from zero to two pi. I want to, to provide a sketch and make sure that the area that's shaded in uh, is the region that we're gonna be finding. Okay, so now what I wanna do is, let me go back to Desmos, okay? And I wanna just plot 
you guys wouldn't recognize that. And that's the old one. Let me go ahead and go back, 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 back. Okay. So my equation is just r theta is equal to three. You guys see that? So I'm just going to plug in three. Three. Bam. Okay. And look at what we get. It is a circle of radius three. It is a circle of radius three. So this automatically lends itself to being able to use just the good old geometry formula. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. So uh, pi times my radius here is three, right? Uh, and we have to square that, so that's nine. So my area should be nine pi, right? We're gonna go ahead and use the equation that uh, that comes up above it to solve this out, okay? And hopefully, right, if all is right with the world, we should be able to get that area, okay? So this is going to be equal to one half times the integral, right? From zero to two pi of r squared, right, r theta squared. So this is gonna be my three squared, the theta, right, uh, one half integral, zero to two pi. That's going to be nine, right? The theta, one half, nine, uh, let me not do that, nine, theta, right, evaluated from zero to two pi. The only one that's gonna contribute anything is the two pi, right? So that's gonna be one half times nine times two pi. The two and the one half cancel and you get left with nine pi. So all is right with the world, right? We used calculus to find the area of a circle. Yay. Okay. And now let me go back to this thing, right? It gives me the equation, right? Or it gives me the graph here, right? Um, and if I pop this out, right? There it is, 28.27. And I'm just going to go ahead and plop it in down below. So 9, I, 28.27, all is even more right with the world, right? That our geometry equations still hold up even though we're using this by calculus, right? Even, even though we're doing this by calculus, right? Not bad, not bad. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to another example. So now what I've got here is the area of a function. Here's my r theta, okay? And it's wanting to do it over zero to pi over two. So first of all, provide a sketch and make sure to shade in the area of the region. So this equation is, I'm giving you guys the Cartesian coordinates here, or the Cartesian version of it, right? It's a circle centered at one, one with radius of root two. So let's go ahead and go back to our Desmos calculator, right? And let's go ahead and throw that in there and see what we get. Uh, two cosine, use parentheses, parentheses are your friend, theta, okay, plus two sine theta. There we go. We have our circle. Okay. And just so that I can show you guys that that is actually correct, I'm going to go over here and turn off the polar and put back the X and the Y, notice that the center is right here and the radius is of square root of two, okay? All right, so now this question is asking us to find the area of the curve from zero to two pi. So this is where the, uh, let me pop this out a little bit. This is where the A and the B work out pretty nicely. So the A, and the b, right, go only from zero to two pi, and it's in steps of pi over 24. Now, so it'll look a little sort of rigid, right? You can make this smaller if you want, but I think 24 is 
sort of sufficient enough to, to sort of prove the point here, right? Uh, let me go ahead and, so if I drag this back, you notice how it traces out the function, right? So I want this curve. From the problem, it says I want the area of the function, r theta, this thing, over the interval from zero to pi over two. So let's go back to here. I want it from zero to pi over two. Pi over two is 1.57 and change, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do 1.57 right there. That looks to be pi over two. So I want this area in here, if that makes sense, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and take a nipping of it. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this thing. Boom, right? I'm gonna go ahead and slap it in our notes over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, make it small, and go ahead and throw it in there right there. So what we want, right? What we're looking for is this area right here. Do you guys see what I'm doing? There you go. All of this. This is what we want. We want this area, right? It's not the circle itself, right? It's not the it's not the semicircle that it looks to be, right? But it's it's sort of like this wedge looking thing, right? So now let's go ahead and get going with it, right? So the in the so the uh, calculus, the integral for this, right, is going to be the one half times the integral, right? from zero to pi over two of two cosine of theta, right? Plus two sine theta, you know, all of that in parentheses, d theta, right? And I want this squared, right? All right, here we go. Uh, if I go ahead and expand this, right? I'm gonna get one, half integral from zero pi over two of four cosine theta squared, right? Plus eight sine theta cosine theta plus four sine squared theta d theta. Okay. Four cosine theta, four sine theta. Okay, those because we have sine squared and cosine squared, we're adding them. That should be equal to one. And now is that each one has a four in front of it, right? We should just get four, right? This right here. I'm going to go ahead and separate it out like this: four times two sine theta, cosine theta, okay? And if you remember your trig rules, right? That is a double angle identity, okay? So all of this now reduces to one half, because I haven't done the integral yet, pi over two of four plus four sine of two theta. D theta, okay? And uh, if you integrate this appropriately, right? The first four, that one, should be a simple just integral, right? The second one, four sine two theta, that's gonna require a u substitution. So I'm gonna at least give you that. U is the two theta, right? And if you do u substitution with that and carry it all the way out, you're gonna get four theta minus two cosine of two theta evaluated from zero to pi over two. 
Okay, now we get to plug all this stuff in equal to one half, right? Uh, to pi, uh, let me, okay, yeah, minus two, oops, cosine of pi minus zero minus two cosine of zero. And what you get here, if you reduce this all down nice, one half to pi plus four. And we are done. So if you completely compute this out, this is what you get. Okay, so now, let me show you guys what that's supposed to look like in our calculator, right? So we have an answer. We have a numerical answer, right? And according to this thing, right? According to our calculator, see that A, we're now getting to it. Okay, so this should be the answer that we're supposed to get. We have a numerical answer. We have something from Desmos that gives us our answer. So let's go ahead and just double check. It's gonna be one half, uh, two pi plus four. And lo and behold, 5.14159. So my area, right? And my numerical answer match up. So we're good. This is the actual area. We are golden. Cool? Okay. I want you guys to try this now. I want you guys to try it. So uh, find the area of these two polar curves, okay? Uh, and uh, make sure you provide a sketch, right? And you shade in the area. If you grab the sketch from, uh, or if you just copy paste uh, from the uh, Desmos calculator into your work, that's perfectly fine. Um, and then as always, right? Don't use the calculator as you, your crutch. Uh, make sure you can do all the um, computations for them. Um, this one will require some stuff from our trig substitution and our trig integral section. You're going to have to reduce uh, some of these integrals down to make them a little nicer for you to do. Okay. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. So moving on, area between two polar curves. So this ended up working just like what we did when we were in rectangular co uh, coordinates, when we had just X's and Y's, right? Uh, for two polar curves, right? The same idea still applies. The same idea still applies. That there's gotta be one where the radius is bigger than the other, right? Depending on which one is bigger, right? That one's the one that goes first. You subtract the smaller radius, right? And you get your answer. Cool? Okay, so to show you how that sort of works, right? Uh, let's go ahead and do this next example. Let's say we had an R1 of theta being that and R2 of theta being this, right? And I wanna find the area between the two curves, right? Between zero and pi over two, okay? Now, I provide the, uh, the QR code for that calculator because you can still use it, but you can't use it how you think you could, okay? Let me, I'll, and I'll explain that in a second. So first of all, let me go ahead and go back to Desmos. I am not gonna use this calculator yet, Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open up another Desmos calculator. And I'm gonna make these, there we go. So I'm gonna throw in my two, uh, my two graphs here, right? So I'm gonna do R is equal to two cosine theta, parentheses are your friend here, plus two sine theta, Okay, and I want it, or let me, let me graph the other one first, two sine two, whoops, r equal to sine of two theta. There we go. Let me zoom in here and let me put the 
bowler stuff on here. You guys see how this is looking, right? It's sort of like a four leaf clover looking thing and then a circle off out to the side sort of skewed away. And we want the area between both of these between zero and pi over two. So you guys see how this is sort of has a theta right below it, right? I'm gonna go ahead and switch those to define the pi divided by two and the pi divided by two here. There we go. So we have the shape now. Hopefully you guys can see that, right? So let me go ahead and grab a snippet here of what we're gonna be computing. Okay, so let me close everything. And I'm gonna go over here, paste it in at least for now. And come on, there we go. Throw that in there. Okay, let me move this over a little bit. There we go. All right, so we have our shape, we have our graphs, right? And what the question is asking us for, right, really, is to find this area right here. All of this, right, I'm gonna make it kind of be close as possible, all the way to maybe about there, and then, whoosh, There we go, it ain't pretty, but uh, I think it's good enough. Hopefully you guys see what I'm doing here. We want that area right there, that sort of like the semicircle area, right? Minus one of the, one of the clovers, right? Take away one of the clovers. So this is what we're gonna wanna do. So now, the idea here, right, is like I said, there's a bigger radius and there's a smaller radius, right? So our big radius is that red one. It's the R1, right? And we wanna take it away from R2, the smaller radius. Sorry, the other way around. We want R2 to be the smaller one. So we wanna take R2 away from R1, right? So that's exactly what's gonna happen. So this is gonna be equal to, right? The integral from zero, the pi over two, right, of my big one, right? So it's gonna be two cosine of theta plus two sine of theta d theta, right? Minus the integral, and that's gonna be squared, right? Minus the integral from zero to pi over two of two sine of theta, two theta, two theta, forgot the two squared, right, d theta. And look at me go, I forgot the one halves everywhere. So remember, it's supposed to be one half times the integral of r theta squared, right? Whew. Okay, now, this one, we've already done. That area, right, it, it was um, our previous example, right? So I'm gonna only just work on this bit. I'm just gonna see what this is supposed to compute to, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and compute that. Let's go ahead and go, uh, I'm gonna just separate it away. One half integral zero pi over two. Uh, two sine two theta squared d theta. Okay, one half integral zero pi over two or sine squared of two theta d theta. Okay, uh, the four combines with the one half that leaves us with two. And then the sine squared of two theta, right? That is gonna turn into this. So this whole thing is gonna now be two times the integral from zero to pi over two of one minus cosine of four theta divided by two. Ooh. 
Okay, this is now going to be the integral of, or is going to be equal to two times the integral from zero to pi over two of one half d theta, right? Minus, uh, let me get this right. Yeah, two times the integral from zero to pi over two of cosine of four theta over two, okay? This one right here, the very first one, that's a normal, nice integration. You're gonna get one half theta, right? This one is gonna require some u substitution, okay? So I'm gonna give you the u substitution at least. So u has to be equal to four theta and stuff happens and you get left with this. This is gonna be sort of like your final answer. Uh, theta minus sine of four theta over four, evaluated zero to pi over two. Okay, so now we've got everything what we need, right? So if you recall from up above, from our first example, right? That very first integral in yellow is going to be one half, right, times four theta minus two cosine of two theta evaluated from zero to pi over two minus, and now we have this nice thing, right? Theta minus sine of four theta over four evaluated from zero to pi over two. Okay, equal to, we know what this thing is. Okay, one half two pi plus four. Now let's go ahead and compute this other thing, minus. I'm gonna go ahead and separate them out, right? Pi over two, minus sine of two pi over four, minus zero, minus sine of zero over four. Box it out. Equal to one half two pi uh, plus four minus I over two. So basically, let me go ahead and shade some of this stuff in. This right here was our previous stuff, right? Which matches up to the yellow integral that's way up above, right? And then the answer for this last tail bit right here is just minus pi over two, that thing right there. Cool, 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 okay. So just to show you guys now, right? What do I mean by I can't use the integral calculator like I know and love, right? I'm gonna show you guys why. So let me now go to the polar functions plotter, right? Since this is r quantity, or r theta squared, right? We have to find the area of each one separately, right? in order for us to get what we need, right? So, and in this case, right, I'm gonna put the first one in first, just to show you guys what that was, right? So it's gonna be two cosine uh, theta plus two sine of theta. So we know that, uh, did I type that in right? Yes, I did. And we wanted it from a zero to pi over two, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go from zero to pi over two, pi over two, you guys remember is about 1.57, right? So that's that length right there. That area was 5.141, right? So let me scroll down a little bit. Now we need to put some numbers on here. So this is 5.141. 1, 5, 9, and change, right? Dot, 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 dot. Okay. 
minus, and now I'm going to do the second portion, right? And this already squares it. That's the part of, that's what I'm saying that you can't use it how you remember it to, right? I'm going to go ahead and put in the two sine of two theta. So then this integral that's right here, right? My A is a 1.5707, that ends up being pi over two. So minus pi over two, so 1.5707. So if you actually compute these out, right, you get some answer, right? And that's cool. Just in case uh, you need to do these, that the online system asks you for something, right? Either one of these is okay. This is sort of like the exact answer. The one half times pi, uh, two pi plus four, right? And sort of it all works out the same. Just make sure that you're using the calculator appropriately. That since the equation itself, right, already squares it, right? You can only use these one by one. So you have to put in uh, the r theta for one and then the r theta for the other one and get an and an sort of an area that way. Got it? Okay. All right. That is areas under the curve. So well, now let's move on to the next one. Arc lengths for polar curves. So for that one, right, uh, the construction is basically, right, using our parametric stuff from section 7.1 and 7.2. Okay, so if you recall, arc lengths under parametric curves were these, this right here, right? Arc lengths for parametric curves were these right here, okay? The only thing that we need to do to convert these for our polar curves, right, is that instead of using uh, E as our parameter, we're going to be using theta as our parameter. We're going to be considering theta our parameter, right? So that in itself just sort of lends itself very nicely. And the equation for uh, arc length and polar curves ends up just sort of falling in our lap in this case. So uh, let me go ahead and go through the construction really quick. So we know that X is R cosine theta and Y is R sine theta, right? I'm gonna change these a little bit to make them look parametric basically. That X of theta is gonna be R theta cosine theta and Y of theta is gonna be R theta sine theta. Okay, so we have an X and a Y that's defined entirely by my theta, entirely by my angle, right? Okay, if you guys take a look at the uh, parametric version of an arc length, right? It's dy uh, dt and dx dt. Basically, we need to take the derivatives with respect to t in this case, but we're doing it in respect to theta in this case, right? Since we're taking a look at these as polar curves, right? Okay. That's what happens down here, right? So x prime of theta is my dx d theta. If you take a look at how x and y are defined, they are a product of two functions, right? Each of which are with respect to theta, right? So we're gonna need a product rule here. So this is where we get this next line. If you hit the definition of x of theta, and y of theta with the product rule, you get these two statements right here, right? And I want you guys to really square in on these, that one and that one, okay? Now, if we grab our uh, L equation for our arc length that was defined for our parametric equations, right? And we plug in our green stuff, that is highlighted right now, right? Everything, everything, everything sort of reduces down, it collapses down into something very, very simple. You can work it out if you want. Uh, you can just take my word for it. I'm pretty sure most of you guys are. This is going to be the arc length. This is gonna be the arc length for uh, our 
uh, polar equations. So if I'm giving you a, a polar curve, an R of theta, right? And I want the arc length from some angle alpha to some angle beta, it's gonna be that integral down there, okay? All right, so now let me go ahead and do one, yeah? So again, I'm gonna give you guys the, uh, the QR code for the calculator. If you take a look at the L, that's on there, right? That's gonna give you the arc length. I'm gonna, I'm, I've already programmed it in there for you. So if you ever need to find an arc length, uh, super, super quick, uh, you can go ahead and use it just to find it. Make sure you still know how to do the calculus behind it. Besides that, you'll be okay, all right? So now let's try to find the arc length for this thing right here. Okay, so now let me go back up here. I'm gonna go back up here. I'm actually going to steal this picture. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to paste it down here. Bam. Let me not make it that big though. There we go. Because I do want to zoom in. There we go. There we are. So I want this particular length right here from here to here. Right, this arc is what I'm looking for, right? How big is that arc? That is what's given by L. So let me scroll up a little bit just so we can take a look at the equation. So we want it from zero to two pi. So it's gonna be the integral from zero to pi over two, sorry, pi over two of R theta plus R prime theta, both of those squared, add them up. So I actually jumped the gun a little bit. Let's go ahead and find R prime of theta. So this is a simple, very, very simple uh, derivative back from Calc 1 beginning, maybe like second, third week of Calc 1. So this is gonna be uh, the derivative of cosine, right? Is negative sine. So negative two sine theta plus two sine, the derivative of sine is cosine theta, whoops, theta, theta. And we're done, that's it. So now we can jump into the integral. So this is gonna be the integral from zero, the pi over two of the square root. I'm not gonna put the roof on it yet. Let's do R theta, right? So it's gonna be two cosine theta, let me make that a little bigger, theta plus two sine theta squared, right? Uh, plus r prime, so that's this, right? Minus two sine theta plus two cosine theta squared. And now I'm gonna put the house over, I'm gonna put the roof over all of this right there. Uh, d theta. Okay. So then now, let me now scroll down and now I'm gonna be playing around with this thing for the rest of the example. I'm gonna try to clean this up a little bit, right? So if you take a look, everything has a two in it, right? Two, 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 two. That two is getting squared, right? So and at the front of each one of these is going to be a four, right? And then I can pass it out of the square root, right? Which since I'm going to be passing it out of the square root, it's going to be square root of the four, which is two. Okay. If you don't, if you can't follow that, write it out. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. But the final sort of result of that cleanup, right, is this, the integral from zero to pi over two of two times the square root, and I'm not gonna put the roof on it yet. Uh, what gets left from here is cosine theta plus sine of theta quantity squared. And these, I'm gonna get left with minus sine theta plus cosine theta, I'm just gonna switch them around. So it's gonna be just plus uh, cosine of theta minus sine theta 
squared. And now I'm gonna put the roof over all of that, d theta. Okay, here we go. Here's our trig equal to the integral from zero to pi over two, two times the square root, and I'm gonna not put the roof on it. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna expand this first thing. This is gonna be cosine squared theta plus two cosine theta sine theta plus sine theta squared. That's that first thing, right? Now I'm gonna do the second thing, plus cosine squared theta, right? Minus two sine theta cosine theta plus sine squared theta. Now I'm gonna put the roof over it. Boom, d theta. Ooh. Make sure your paper is uh, going sideways for this one. Unfortunately, this is the only step that ne you need to go sideways for. So let me explain why. You have a cosine theta plus sine theta, right? And then you have it again, cosine theta plus sine theta, okay? And then finally, you have a positive two cosine theta sine theta, and then a minus two cosine theta sine theta. So these, that one cancels this one, right? And each one of these uh, cosine thetas plus sine thetas that got left behind, right, is equal to one. So all of this reduces to the integral from zero to pi over two two times the square root of two. D theta. Right? And this integral, right, is uh, two root two theta evaluated from zero to pi over two. And if you solve this out right, the only one that's going to contribute anything is the pi over two. So it's going to be two root two times pi over two. The twos cancel out and you get left with root two pi and we're done. Okay, so now just for kicks and giggles, let's go back to our computer our calculator here, right? We know what we want. We want the two cosine theta plus two sine theta. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that into my calculator, right? Two cosine theta plus two sine theta, right? And we want it from zero to pi over two. Now we have our L already done for us, right? So that should be, 4.4428829. I'm hoping that this root two pi is equal to that. So let's go ahead and do square root of two times pi. And lo and behold, all is right with the world. 4.4428829 and change. We have a numerical answer. Cool beans, cool stuff. There we are, okay. So that's our arc length. Simple enough, kinda, maybe, yeah? Okay, uh, I've got some quick checks for you guys to try out. So try these out, okay? Uh, like I said before, right? Use the um, use the calculator that I'm providing you. Uh, use it to verify your work, to double check your work, right? It's not supposed to be a crutch. Uh, make sure you're able to do all the integrals uh, that you see, okay? All right, and after that is lecture question. So that means I'm done here. Uh, if you have any questions on the lecture questions, if you get stuck on any one of these, uh, come to my office hours, come to my, um, uh, come to my all day Friday times, okay? Uh, and I can work some out with you guys, okay? Uh, besides that, I think I am all done here.
happy studying.